there welcome to my channel my name is linda i have like a craft and a half for you maybe a craft and a quarter <laughs> i'll explain those details for you in just a little bit i'd like to thank beaver for sponsoring this video so what are we waiting for let's get started Today we'll be working on Christmas home decor plus a fun option for craft show displays. But first, let's take a look at the first product we'll be using with all our projects today. I know it's super cute, isn't it? The kitty, not the saw. <laughs> so this is the Viver mini table saw. Right out of the box, except we did slide that little half circle thing in there to help, you know, when you do angle cutting. And now we're just putting in the drill chuck. Basically, it was just slide it in, add a couple of little screws. As you can tell, those are not my hands. <laughs> my husband's helping me here. Uh, put this little bar in. It's just a screw on each side with a couple of wing nuts. This just helps to keep your wood straight. It'll Your wood will lean against it to keep it straight as you move it. And then we're adding a couple screws to put this little plate in. And this holds the little black apron. Here it is here. Basically another screw and a wing nut. And this is what's going to cover your saw blade for safety. And in your saw blade, you just slide it in through the top and then you access it through the side to put the little things on to, you know, tighten it in there. So that's how you're going to change it. This comes with five different saw blades. And of course, we're going to adjust the little cover blade and there it is, keeps everything safe. So I have the machine size and weight on the screen for you, but I wanted to show you it does come with this little attachment here. It has Velcro on it and it allows you to add any of the little sanding papers to it. You just put it into the side of the drill chuck here, into the opening of the drill chuck, of course. Use the little tool, tighten it in nice and easy. And then, of course, you can switch between your different accessories. It has five sanding circles it comes with. It comes with like this wool thing here for buffing. It comes with a little spongy thing. You get a paintbrush. No, that doesn't go in the drill chuck just usable <laughs> and you get five different blades you know the blades are for different things like diamond cutting that kind of thing here you could even of course use the drill chuck with a drill bit if you wanted to drill a hole I of course probably won't use that because I have my own little <laughs> drill but it's there for you if you didn't have one all right easy of course to take on and off now as we said earlier when we're putting the machine together this does have the black apron to cover that saw blade but you need to be careful and exercise all safety precautions when using this because it is a very powerful cutting machine okay so careful 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 want to keep all our fingers intact now this machine is very lightweight it's 11 and a half pounds and it's so powerful that if you go to cut wood it's going to move on you so i suggest you clamp it down it's got this nice little area just happens to have where the saw blade at the bottom is clamp it down to a side of a table doesn't take much just a little bit of tightening and your saw is going to stay perfectly in place now this is gonna be great for paint sticks, trim boards, dowels. It says no more than about one and a half inches in depth for cutting. I think we did one inch today. You can see here how that slide bar helps kind of just keep your wood straight. And of course it has this little angle dial here so you can make, you know, nice mitered corners or whatever i did just like a 45 degree angle just playing with it i'm just going to simulate here but you lean your wood against that and hold that and slide it to make your cuts and it cuts so perfectly smooth it's going to look really really nice when i actually go to need some framing and miter those little corners did i use miter right <laughs> anyway I also would recommend some kind of push stick when you're using this so that your fingers don't get too close to the blade, even though I know it has the cover, or if any excess wood falls out, you don't stick your fingers in there to push it out of the way. Use a little, you know, push stick to push it off. I even uh, turn my blade on and off in between cuts just for safety reasons. I just thought that would be a little bit smart because I do want to keep all my fingers for crafting. This is the wood we're going to be using today from Dollar Tree. It's about an inch thick. It cut through it just like butter it was really nice and smooth the machine is actually quiet I'll let you hear that in a little bit as we're cutting but other than that I think I pretty much covered everything I'll show you a little shot here with the clamps holding the machine down on the side of the table so it doesn't move when you're cutting so let's move on to project number one so for this project i have a star in my supply and the wood all came from dollar tree i'm going to use this flat board it's a long one though i'm going to cut it down to 12 inches and then these thicker boards 
three quarter inch. I thought they were about an inch, but three quarter inch, gonna need six of them. The first board, all these boards are 10 inches long. So the first board we're gonna leave at 10 inches. And then each subsequent board that we stack on top of that is gonna be an inch shorter that we cut down all the way to the top. Okay, and then we're gonna use the extra pieces on those all except for one board to help us finish our tree. So the second board we cut down one inch to nine inches. We have that one inch remaining to help hold our star. And then of course we go down to eight inches, keeping the little two inch piece. We're gonna go down to seven inches, keeping the three inch piece, six inches, keeping the four inch piece. And the one board that we cut down to five inches, we don't need that other five inch piece. Save that for later. Now, as you can see, I've got strips of paper that I cut down for all the sizes too, only because I'm gonna cover mine with fabric, alternating fabric. Through the tree and so the papers are going to help me to size my fabric but if you aren't going to do that and you're just going to paint yours you don't need paper strips to help you out so let's go ahead and move outside to cutting the wood i have the sound on just a little bit here in this first clip so you can hear how loud it is but there is rain in the background You can see how smooth that wood went right through. You just lean it against that angle cutter and there's a groove there so that angle cutter can slide all the way through the machine. You can see I, there's excess piece of wood there. I did not put my fingers through there. I used a push stick and you can see how smooth that wood is. There's no like splinters hanging off of it or anything. It's really a nice machine to work with. I like it so much better than the miter box and saw. It's just quick and easy. I'll just cut the wood here, let you see a few cuts, although it's nothing exciting. I'm just doing a straight cut, but you know, I want you to see the machine. I believe the machine runs right about $100, but there are Black Friday sales coming. I'll have a link in the description box for that. There's like percentage off, and then there's like 24-hour daily deals on products. So make sure you go through that link to, you know, find all the different things that are on sale and, you know, if they're flash sales or whatnot, that kind of thing. And then, of course, I'll have links to the product I'm using today in the description box because... Christmas presents are going to be coming around. <laughs> all right, we've got our wood all finished up. And now all I've done here is mark where I'm going to be gluing my wood together. And I make little lines and X's so I know where not to paint or stain anything like that. I'm using antique wax mixed with water for the staining. Because when you wood glue, it just, wood glue works better on unpainted surfaces adhering to another unpainted surface. It can work on painted, but it just works better unpainted. So I'm just gonna show a little bit of the staining process here. And then of course, once the stain is dry, I just take it outside off camera and I sand in distress all the pieces, all right? Do a little bit more of the staining here. I did this because even though I'm covering it with fabric, I didn't want to just paint around the edges. That'd be a hassle. So I just paint kind of the whole thing through. But I want a little bit of that stain to show around the edges. I also stained the star front and back. Left a spot where the little chunk of wood's going to be. And I'm going to use Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth. Paint a couple of coats there. Sanding here. Everything is sanded and ready to go. Again, where I'm covering it with fabric, you can cover it with paper. You can do like... A, maybe a mix of a stain and maybe a white or a green alternating the paint colors on the boards just to make it you know a, a kind of a really artful colorful Christmas tree however you want to do it so right now I'm going ahead and I'm just using wood glue here and stacking my wood of course one on top of the other narrow side up the bottom piece that is the bottom platform is the only one that's going to actually just like lay flat all right the other ones here as you can see is kind of the narrow side all the way up is that understandable <laughs> and this is how everything is clamped my husband actually thought of putting this wood board down below so because it's the exact width for that very first board of the tree to sit where I needed it to sit on the bottom platform. So anyway, <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that. Now I'm going to start arranging my paper pieces here, get them in the order so I can start cutting out the fabric I need. I'm going to use some batting material as well. I got this on eBay. It 
came for like quilters, but it's nice because it's already cut in a two inch piece. I cut it down further, but it's nice because I don't have to cut as much. And then I'm going to use this fabric here with the batting on top, alternating with some felt fabric. I'll show you in a minute. So you can see I cut my batting about an eighth of an inch shorter all the way around, and then I cut my fabric piece to exactly fit it. I'll alternate each one, and in between, this is the felt I'm going to be using to just give it a little bit of some fun. You could use the same fabric all the way up if you want. And yes, <laughs> I'm in very limited room here. I've got my tree like all clamped to the left. I've got a little kitty in the middle and I kid you not, you know what, a little 10 inch space here I'm working to just kind of cut out all my pieces. And again, I'm making everything shorter all the way around because I want that little bit of wood to show with the staining and everything otherwise why do we do all that process to it but you could completely cover it up if you want so here's all the pieces cut and ready to go except for that top piece all i did is have a little bit of staining there so if you're because the star is going to rest on that so if you're a gluer you can go ahead and glue all that down if you want to choose this design method i also cut a piece for the star i originally wasn't going to do that but then it, did, it looked funny so i thought i need to add fabric onto that too and then i'm also got a one inch strip piece of fabric here i got at walmart that i've ripped we're going to use for a bow later and then i've got this piece of muslin i ripped into a tag going to use some batting you all know I've been using like batting and muslin this year for to make cute little puffy fabric tags I'm using these clickable stamps from Michaels I'll have that link down in the description box and I'm just stamping oh Christmas tree because it works <laughs> If you're a gluer, you can glue all that together. If you want to go this option, you can stamp on just a piece of paper if you want, a piece of cardstock. That would look just as pretty. And then, of course, I'll just show a little bit of sewing in here and sew around the edges of my tag and on the fabric strips for my tree. I just think it adds a little something. If you don't have a sewing machine, you know, you're not a sewer, you're a gluer, like an extra fine Sharpie marker looks really cute to make the little fine dashes all the way around it just gives it a little bit more of kind of a whimsical country look and i've done it i used to do it in the past before i uh, really kicked up my sewing again um, and it looks perfectly wonderful so you have that option if you want to even on strips like this make those little dash lines around and it's super cute this is what the sewing looks like on this one and on this one i used a little bit darker thread so you can kind of see that contrast and then i'm going to bring in some vintage photo distress ink around the kitty and <laughs> ink up my star and my tag and all my fabric pieces i'll just show a little bit here but i think it just adds nice little shadowing around it you don't see it as much like on the darker felt but you see it a little bit and then I'm going to start gluing this down and when I go to glue these down I wanted to give it like a little bit of a quilted look and so with or without sewing you could do this you just kind of lay it down and I'm doing it right about where my sew lines are and you can see I just kind of push it in with my fingernail and kind of indent it a little bit and it looks like I have like an extra piece of batting underneath there and gives it a little bit more of a quilty look. And I like how that turns out. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, if you're doing this process. But I just think it gives it a little bit more personality and just gives it a little bit more of that kind of warmth and comfort a little bit, I guess, so to speak, if you want to say it that way. We'll get our last piece on here. Yeah, I just like the way this turned out with the alternating of the fabrics and stuff. And then I'm going to glue our little bit onto our star up at the top. See, I love the way that star looks just kind of stained and painted over it, but it just didn't look right with the rest of the fabric. But this looks just as cute. But you could see how that would look if you wanted to just paint the whole thing. All right, and get that indented and quilted in there and I've tied that little one inch ripped strip of fabric into a bow. I'm going to glue it down in the middle and then I'm just going to wrinkle and crinkle where I want my tails to be and I'm going to go ahead and glue those into position as well. That way they don't just hang straight down. Just glue them where you want them to help keep the personality. Get the other side done here. It's just the thing I like to do. I like to wrinkle and crinkle. And then we're going to go ahead and glue our tag down into position. And I've got some red and cream twine I get at Dollar Tree. I've put it into a bow and I glue that down to the center of the big bow. And I do kind of spot glue down the tails of the twine as well. I just show here one side a little bit. Glue down a couple pieces of greenery 
right on top of that twine bow just to give it a little something, you know, and then glue down a little pine cone. I think it's super cute. And then the last thing I want to do is take some of this glitter dust. I'll have a link down below. I get it off Etsy. It's just clear with a little silver shimmer in it, and I'm going to kind of shimmer the whole thing. And that makes this project complete. Let's look at our second product from Viver we'll be using in project number two. So you're wondering why I have a gigantic basket here for you. Let me tell you the story. So I get lots of questions. How can, and people email me and everything because you want to know that. How can... I display like larger items, pillows, that kind of things at craft shows. And I have been looking everywhere online and everything for something substantial enough that I can display my own pillows and things like that. And everything is like half the size of this that you can get through Viver and about three times the price. It's incredible what they want for pricing. I mean, and so when Viver contacted me, asked me if I'd like to do another video for them, showcasing, you know, a few items. Plus, I have to say right now, they are headed into, which is why I have an extra video out this week, they are headed into a really fabulous Black Friday sale. I'll have the link down in the description box to uh, Viver showing all the things that are on sale for Black Friday, as well as all the links that, uh, to product that I'll be using in this video today. Of course, you're seeing some of them now. And then ones that I've used before in uh, other videos, but I didn't use today. And then ones I'll be using again <laughs> in another upcoming video anyway, because there's like four Viva product that I've worked with that I'm having fun working with, of course. So I featured three of those today. Well, I featured two and then I used one very silently, but I know you saw it <laughs> anyway and so when i saw this i really wanted it to work with it and so i'm going to put it together i'm going to fast forward this for you it's just a nice large size rolling basket okay and then we're just going to just decorate it up so i'll put it together then we're going to switch into a, a couple of things or one thing <laughs> that i'm making to go with this and then we're going to come back to this then in a couple of weeks i am going to uh be coming out with my video on setting up my craft show for this year for 2023 it's going to have this in the mix of all my stuff and you're going to see what it looks like as part of your setup for craft shows so let's move on with getting this thing put together
So as you can see, my cart's put together. It was really simple, just took a few minutes. I just, you know, screwed the wheels in on the bottom and then those two long plates that I showed you set right up on top inside the basket and then those two like U-shaped like metal joint things and a washer and little top screws. You just put the uh, U-shaped thing from underneath around the bar up through the holes in the plates and a washer and then screw the little cap on. That was it. It was done. I was able to stay in my church clothes, not get dirty. And these were my only tools. So with that said, we're going to move into decorating this. I just wanted to share this with you all because I've had those questions. How do I display stuff and I kid you not three times the price online for half the size of this and what is cool about this and I know you can't see it but there are little breaks on each of the wheels so it's not going to roll away if you have it in place at the show but I've just had questions like how do you you know show your like big pillows or large items that kind of thing and I am thinking about using like an old ladder and then you store the pillows like on the rungs I think that'll be cute with this displayed in front of it still toggling with that idea we'll see what happens but I think this is just going to work spectacular for slightly about a hundred dollars which is well worth it to me especially for this size and then a couple of weeks you're going to see how it looks at a craft show I will throw some pillows and stuff in here with the decoration just so you can kind of see this view but then at the show you'll see it in view with everything else so let's move on to project number two for the wood portion of this project I have this 10 by 10 piece of wood it's about a quarter inch thick and I just want to make like a six by eight tag and of course I am going to cut it using the Viver mini saw it worked perfectly wonderful of course I'll use the angle cutter to kind of make that tag shape at the top but I just kind of get started with it and then when I get to a point where my wood's kind of completely on the top of that table surface I use a big stick of wood here to push it all the way through then I'm just going to adjust that angle cutter to 45 degree angle to the left to make one side and 45 to the right to do the other side and this is what our tag looks like once it's done now I want to put a little decorative thing here for like where our rope's gonna go through. I don't know what these are called. They come in a bag at Hobby Lobby unfinished wood. I just kind of drawing the inner circle so I know what drill bit to use to, you know, drill the circle in my tag here. And then I want to go ahead and cover my paper. I'm gonna paint around the edges. I'll do that in a minute, but I want to use some scrapbook paper to kind of add some decorative to the top you could just do all paint if you even want to make a tag here but i just thought this tag would look cute hanging off a basket because right when we have little baskets of gifts or something like that right there's a little tag hanging off so that's where kind of my idea kind of germinated in my brain so i'm cutting the front piece down about a quarter inch smaller all the way around so that we will see that little bit of a wood perimeter on our tag and on the back side i just go ahead and cover it completely with just regular black card stock so i'm getting this cut down here i'll show you what it looks like here in just a moment just like that so you see that little bit of a perimeter around there okay then what I'm going to go ahead and do is using Debbie's Design Diary Little Black Dress Paint. I'll just paint around the perimeter, front and back on the tag. Then I'll paint that little wood thing that I don't know what it is. At one time I looked it up on the packaging and I had it in my brain what it was so I could sound super smart when I told you what it was. But now I don't know what it is so you're out of luck on that. Just look for what it looks like when you look at the bags of unfinished wood in the Hobby Lobby section. <laughs> and then of course I will just distress it a little bit here on camera. Here we go. Just distressing just a tiny bit just because... I like to add that when I usually paint something I like to distress it a little bit but I didn't feel the need to get out the electric sander because again it's just a little bit of distressing and now I'm just taking both of my pieces of paper that I cut for the tag and I'm taking it to the sewing machine here I love to do this to add some texture on it again you could use a sharpie marker make little dash lines around it if you're not a sewer and on this particular machine it's actually I've got equipped with the size 14 needle on it and it works perfectly wonderful going through 
uh, this paper, but both of them are kind of like a thicker cardstock material. And then I'm taking the open end of my scissor blades once I've got the sewing done, and I'm just scraping around the edges to give it a little bit more texture here. If you're not a sewer and you want to add this type of texture, it works really nice, especially papers that kind of have that white core, as you can see here. It just kind of gives it a little shadowing effect around it, and it will help it to kind of pop up off of the wood a little bit, uh, you know, instead of just lying flat when it's glued onto the wood. Right, get that done. We'll go ahead and get both our pieces of paper glued onto our wood, just using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here. And then off camera, I went ahead and glued the little wood piece on, and I'm just using some thick twine from Walmart. I'll thread it through that hole and just kind of let it hang so we can tie it on later. And then I just made a little quote out of some vinyl using my Cricut machine just says handmade for you. I almost thought about like for sale or something like that, but I just thought handmade for you is cute enough. And then once I peel off that carrier sheet there, I'm going to take some Dixie Bell chalk paint in the color drop cloth, mix it with water, dip my fan brush in that. I like to wipe off the excess and then I'll tap the fan brush to just add a little bit of splatter onto the tag for some a little bit more decor, and then we're going to set this tag aside for a moment, and we're going to move on to our nice beaver wire basket. So now we're going to start to decorate the inside of the basket. You don't have to do anything at all, but if you want to cutesy it up a little bit, there are a couple options here. Obviously, if you aren't a sewer, you could drape some cute fabric, you know, from one side to the other inside of your basket. You could take a strip of ribbon, and you can, you know, go in and out through the wire on the outside and bring it around the front and make a little bow, which is probably what I'm going to do as well. And if you're a sewer, then, you know, you want to make something to fit inside. Now, my problem is I was looking for fabric that I wanted to make work. Let me look this up. It's really cute and it like totally matches the wheels. I had two yards. In order to do this right, you need three yards. So I am kind of making like a reverse wrap of a present and then as you can see I don't have enough fabric to go kind of on the sides. I've got this all pinned in. I'm not concerned about that. Technically I'm a week out from a show. I have no time to really make this proper so and I'm going to cover up the bottom with like a little pad so all those pins are going to be covered. They're not going to poke anybody and I'm just going to kind of tack glue this on but in order to cover up these sides over here I found a coordinating fabric that works well enough that we're going to add here to tack it together and then we're going to use that as our bottom now those of you that aren't sewers as well what you could do is take the batting that I'm going to show you it's about a one inch thick piece of batting you can wrap it with some cute fabric lay it in the bottom put you know a cute little bow on the front with the little tag we made and it would look really cute technically the way you should do this is make like a bag to fit inside this so if you're a sewer obviously you want to figure your dimensions from the bottom up to the top and then i'd probably add another 12 inches or so if you want to make a little cuff around this and then of course measure your diameter all the way around cut that to length and make one seam sew a seam and now you've got a tube right and then at the bottom you want to measure your bottom all the way around all sides you know height length add maybe about one inch and then you're going to take that bottom and you're going to sew it to the one end open of your tube and then once you're done you've got like a bag that you're going to lay inside it's going to be extra long like this but that's so that you could come once you've laid it over you can come and kind of fold that excess back over and make yourself like a little cuff if you want so that's the right way i'm doing it the quick and easy way which is why i didn't really show you you know this because it's not professional anyway so what i'm doing is that excess here kind of like you know when you wrap a present and you're like six inches shy of a piece of paper to cover it all that same paper or a coordinating paper maybe you have a little strip from that same paper of another present you wrapped or you have a coordinating paper so you take that little strip and you feed it in there and then wrap the other paper over it and try to make it look nice with two pieces of wrapping paper that's what i'm doing here and i'm trying to also as i bring it in i'm trying to fit the diameter all the way around so I've got it ready to go. 
I've got it laying there and then I've got my sides draped down. You can see it goes all the way down to the bottom of the basket here. And then what I'm gonna do is allow you to just see me. I've got two wide pieces of fabric that I'm just gonna strip over the end or lay over the end. So the two strips are together. And then we're just going to fold this up and make a little cuff, okay? And then in the bottom, we're gonna do our little padding pillow. Easy peasy. So let's get to putting this the rest of the way makeshift together. <laughs> For the coordinating fabric, I just have this plaid that I get from Walmart and I cut it just wide enough on the sides to kind of, you know, fit where the opening is, where there's like naked wire showing. And then down on the outside, I will make sure that I get the length as close as possible to the length of the fabric that's already hanging there. And then I'm just kind of gluing it down the sides to attach it to the other fabric. And then I'll spot glue it. I think I do it off camera. I spot glue it a little bit inside as well. And then once I've got both sides glued on, I'm going to take that whole edge that's hanging and fold it back up over the basket to the inside to kind of give us a little bit of a brim right all the way around the top of our basket just for decorative okay I just thought that would look nice and then when you get to the corners you're going to probably have to kind of pleat it and fold it over a little bit just to make sure that it's not like ugly wrinkled in the corners just one I found that one little kind of fold over pleat made it look nice and once I get that finished and into place and everything's all nice and smooth I'm going to go ahead on the inside and I'm going to tuck it under just about an inch all the way around and I'm going to spot glue it so it looks all nice and finished off in there again you can see the bottom all that's going to be covered so I'm not worried about all that unfinished down so there. now I'm taking some more of that coordinating fabric I ripped about a two inch wide strip it's about about three yards long and I'm weaving it in and out of that wire basket right underneath that brim and I know what you're thinking if my red plaid at first didn't cover the whole cart because I only had two yards why didn't I use this coordinating fabric to cover the whole thing because that's not the way I wanted it so there you go once I get to the end get the two ends back together and meet I just tied into knot cut off the excess here because I don't really need that I wanted like a bigger bow here so I've got like a six inch wide piece of the same ribbon here and I just tied it into a nice big floppy bow and we're going to put that right in the center okay and I'm going to add a little bit of the beacon fabric tack glue here and I'm going to also use a little bit of just thick crochet thread and just kind of sew it on there the fabric tack glue would hold really well but the sewing just kind of helps cinch that bow up kind of really tight and into like an upright position so I thought that would make it look nice since it's such a wide piece of fabric I didn't want it just kind of flopping down but I'll also use the fabric tack to kind of attach those uh bow loops to the fabric a little bit as well so here I am just kind of attaching it to hold those upright as well and you could totally just leave it like this but I thought the extra added of the tag would look really cute so now I'm taking that tag up and weaving it up through the center of that bow and then with the tail so long I'm going to just tie another little bow here and I think that looks super super cute now what I going to do is I've got this thick batting I picked up at Joann's it's about an inch thick it's only like seven dollars a yard I think and then I got it on sale for like three dollars a yard something like that and then again a piece of that plaid so it matches with the plaid that I've been using and I'm just kind of gluing it and wrapping it like a present I'm not worried about covering the bottom or anything like that because it's not going to be seen because it's going to lay down on top of the fabric that's already down there in the center of our basket and here comes a little Bella to kind of help mom out as I'm wrapping of course she went off screen but she'll be back in a minute and want to play but I got to scooch her away from it don't touch the glue <laughs> mommy's got to finish wrapping all right and then once I get this all buttoned up we'll lay it inside the basket and that makes this project complete
So I hope you enjoyed both of these projects today, and I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some of the Viver product that I shared with you today. Again, the links to those products will be down in the description box, as well as the link to the Viver site itself for the Black Friday sales. Remember, there's percentages off, and there's like 24-hour flash sales through the 27th of this month of November, I believe. Thank you again to Viva for sponsoring this video. I can't wait to show you all what this basket looks like in the midst of my craft setup, so be on the lookout for that. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite, and please give this video a thumbs up because it does help my channel to grow. If you walked in here for the first time and you're just checking things out and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you don't miss out on another project from me. Before I go, I'm gonna leave you with one final thought. It's a beautiful thing to be thankful for the one who came to seek and save those that are lost. It's a beautiful thing to know that Jesus came to this earth for you, and it's a beautiful thing that he brings hope to your heart. He is your peace, and he breaks down barriers in your life. He preaches peace, extends grace, gives love. He is your chief cornerstone and the rock on which you stand. He is your strength and your breath of life. This Thanksgiving, as you gather together in love with friends and family, enjoy your time with them, Break bread with them, but also take a moment to be thoughtful, whispering thanks to God for all your moments in this life, and celebrate with joy for what He has done for you. Allow the beauty of His love to be a comfort in your life. Jesus is here for you and for your heart, so believe, understand, and be encouraged that He will always be here for you. He will always love you, always be with you. He will never forsake you. He gives you breath and life and that is something of value to be thankful for, and it's definitely worth celebrating. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.